And here we are, my friends, in the draft of T1 versus TES. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be phenomenal, right? It's, let's see how our boys are picking themselves up. I mean, I, I'm not going to joke. Like, the drafts are, like, one of the most important part in the League of Legends gameplay. Uh, sure, it matters if you execute them, right? We, I mean, you probably saw the last couple of series and... People were inting quite a lot, so let's just hope that we don't int and that we pick champions and then play them as they are intended to and so on and so on and so on. Because on the other side, let's see, I mean, they have already picked up the Rumble, so 369, pretty arrogant, but also, I mean, the champion is decently good, right, I guess. Picking up the Rumble, right, saying, okay, I don't care, I'm going to pick that, I'm going to have the ability to ult waves and do this and do that, right. They have banned the Vi against Owner, they have banned... Um, the Kalista, more so against Guma and Carrier, right? And then the Nar, right? Obviously that leaves T1 on the red side with like all the three OP bands, right? Aurora, Yon and Skarnar. And yeah, that means a couple of champions are coming through. We have an interesting combination here, Tian with the Ivern for Cream's uh, Tristana, or supposedly Cream's Tristana, right? They could do crazy things with swaps, but let's assume this is going to be a mid lane Tristana as a counter pick into the Silas, right? Uh, obviously Silas is the anti-mage champion, if you pick something like a Tristana that's an AD carry. Not only is she an AD carry that's usually good against mages, but in this one particularly good. And oh my god! <laughs> We're doing it in game number one. We're doing it in game number one. This is so important. Okay, now this game is omega important. If we win this, or if the Caitlyn Lux, or Caitlyn Morgana, or whatever we are ending up picking, right? If that lane performs, this will change everything for this draft. This will change everything. But the problem is, they now see it coming. So, they can look for options. Honestly, there are not too many great options, right? Usually, this lane is not good against champions that have, like, pokes or poke lanes, other poke lanes. If you go for, I don't know, uh, double mages, who are by Velkos or whatever, right? Some silly stuff like that. That's obviously, like, something that Caitlyn Lux would have some issues with, right? And the next thing is like caster lane. So misfortune kind of goes into that direction, right? Especially because misfortune uh, like ults after Leona ults, right? That's the thing. Obviously at level six, Caitlyn Lux not really. Their ults don't really do anything in the one view in in a fight. Oh, it's Bard! It's Bard actually. It's not Lux or anything. That's so good because the Bard is like so good against the uh, the misfortune, right? Whereas the Lux here in this lane, I mean. Like, it's not that the Bard can't be attacked, right? But obviously the Bard has the E, which is at, at least can act like a form of escape at times, right? And, I mean, hey, the ultimate is just really fucking good. So let's see where this goes. I think T1 here, they have uh, comfort champions in the bot lane. Owner pretty strong champion if you can link up with his solo lanes. And uh, the solo lanes individually, I don't really love it for them. But, yeah, I mean, this one, the top side is just really, really rough. But uh, we'll have to see, right, where Tien goes. If Tien tries to help his strong lanes on the top side so that Owner can change these matchups, or if he has to stick to the bot lane and, well, we can play around T1's strong suit. There's obviously the problem with lane swaps, which can uh, neutralize the powerful bot lane from T1 to some extent, but I don't know, like, Caitlyn getting plates anyway, right? Sadly, we don't get a replay, but oh, let's see here. Guma gets hit by the E. I'm going to get chunked. It's going to flash away. Wait, Mako follows under the turret, but Kara didn't have Q. Aye, 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 aye. That was pretty messy. Guma lost his cleanse in an earlier exchange somewhere, so... Yeah, now without cleanse, can't step forward like that. Faker here gets attacked, right? The only way forward... Uh, the only way here is forward, and uh, yeah, Tian doesn't have a way. First blood for Faker. I mean... Again, here we see like the mid lane matchup. It's absolutely horrible. But yeah, Carrier with his own Bard skin, the SKT T1 Bard skin. I mean, not SKT, you know what I mean, right? Uh, knocks it down. Pretty good. And uh, it's 430, you know what that means. Recall on the cannon minion wave, move towards top lane for the six minute drop, drop speed. Let's just say it's the opposite of what uh, you would expect if you have watched or if you looked at the statistics of, of Swiss stage, right? T1 is a team that prioritizes farm, especially plates, over the early drops. They only average, well, I think it was 1.8, 1.5 or, or something like that on, on grubs, right? They, they they literally don't care about grubs. Okay, Faker here sidesteps the R, gets the buster shot, but yeah, it's just not enough. And on the other side, T... Oh my god, it's a mess. It's such a mess, man. It's such a mess. 
How did the Rumble did so much damage, man? Oh no, Zero. What is he doing? <gasps> they don't spot him. They don't know. They think he has recalled. Okay, Zeus. Never mind. Gold. And now, oh, we have the ult here onto Jackie Love flashes away. Now let's see. Okay, we got some cooldowns. Let's disengage and let's uh, regroup when uh, we have our ults back up available, right? Obviously, Dragon is spawning. We wouldn't have ults for that. But uh, yeah, not the worst of situations, right? Getting the AD carry flash. We'll take that. We'll take that. Okay, so Dragon has been started here. T1 on their way to get the next neutral objective. So far, that has been really working well for them. Now, um, the question is, like, are we still in a position to play for, for Herald, right? Herald is something that we probably really want to take care of. Anyway, so now T1 here forcing the next objective, right? Obviously, that's one of the other strengths of Caitlyn, right? She's good in laning fate, great even. But the next thing is, like, setting up for objectives, right? Because she can't put down the traps and, well, now you're in a bit of a sticky situation. So Jackie Love doesn't have flash. Now let's see the combo here. Goes onto Carrier, but he just goes over the wall. We take care of the Herald and it's like, yeah, sure. Carrier's heal and we use some ults, but overall just a fine situation because we end up with the objective and hey, we'll take that. We'll take that. Well, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. At, at least that's what I tell myself, right? Now let's see. They've overloaded the side lane here a bit, but... Should be okay. The problem is we don't have that much uh, wave clear here with these members. Right, 369 is also here. Okay, this is a bit silly. I mean, okay, cool. Enjoy, enjoy top lane tower. It's literally one of the like least relevant turrets on the map, like stra strategically wise or whatever you say that. And like Faker gets the solo turret in bot lane, no shared XP or anything. And that's just yeah, that's just good for T1. But we'll see. Okay, so next. Siege-esque situations, right? And there's the ult. Okay, can we do something here? Cream... Oh, no. Wait, what? Ay, ay, ay. Owner. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. He's still burning. What the fuck? God damn it, man. Yeah, sadly, Guma didn't have a trap. So, like, Cream was caught by uh, Carrier's ult. But, uh, yeah, again, he didn't have another one. Very clear, trying to clear the wave. And that's the problem with our champions, right? We don't really have that much wave clear. And on the other side, I mean, they have obviously Tian with his brushes and so on and so on. That's pretty annoying. Cream, even with two grubs, he's destroying turrets as a Tristan, obviously. Uh, in case you haven't seen it, right, Zeus obviously was not there. He was looking and collected the top lane in the turret. That's pretty good for him because now, all of a sudden, he is ahead on gold against the uh, 369, right? It's like he is now even in CXP. And he's now ahead in gold, right? So that's some of the benefits that have come uh, through in the last couple of moments, right? Anyway, now with Zeus here on a potential flank, we have regained control of the area to some extent. The trap lines are cool. There's the old combo. Tian, hey, can you move? Okay. It's like, hey. But that's too old. That's too old. That's too old, right? So Barrett is now a bit of a situation, right? But uh, yeah, so sole point. Like if they can get Baron, that would be obviously a bit crazy. And again, they have so much damage. Owner has smite though. Let's see. Oh, Owner walks forward into the thick of all of that. He doesn't have flash. Remember, that's Owner dead. Zeus is still waiting on the flank for, for his angle. There's the ult coming through. So they get Owner, but they, I mean, it's impossible to do Baron here anymore. So again, if if, if, if it's Owner for soul point, which is the thing that happened here in the extended play, right? No other summoner spell lost or anything like that. No turrets, no waves, no anything really especially like especially bad. It's just fine, right? It's like it's not owner had guardian angel or anything like that. Like again, it's just owner's death for soul point. We'll take that. We'll take that. Thank you for your service, owner. We'll have to see how we can uh, play the game, right? Because again, we have Zeus now, who is <laughs> that guy now is 1.1k ad, right? This like sideline match exploded in Zeus's favor. Quite nicely, quite nicely for us, right? So we'll have to see how we can leverage that. And again, the problem is it's Rumble, right? That guy who's going to go Zonias at some point, right? It's going to make him a oh, Rift Maker. That's going to give him more HP and a bit of sustain, right? Obviously, that's what the item does. And again, the W, the Q, the R, right? It just makes him harder to dive. And oh, they're TPing onto this. Yeah, they they they're looking for a flip. And there's the old. And yeah, no. What's the what's the plan for T1? Zeus TP's in. Okay, I don't know if I like this. I don't know if I like this. 
Why are we handshaking 5v fighting against this composition? Okay, okay, okay. We have to be careful, we have to be careful, we can't overforce this. Okay, let's see, let's see, this can go wrong so fast. The AoE from this composition of them is so hard. Guma flashes over the wall and now, yeah, we win. We win. We can... Can we finish bot? Oh, we don't have TP. Oh, and bot lane was not, not anymore there. Yeah, it should be game here at this point. Oh my god, I, I, I'm aging. D1 played this fight so beautifully. I mean, to, the, the decision to take this fight, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. So scary, so scary to take this fight from me. Because, like, hey, this is literally what the TS comp wants. They want 5v5s, especially in, like, these sticky jungle corridors. That's just scary. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, we can't, we can't finish. Sadly, we can't. It's too early for that. And we'll have to be careful here about, like, Baron, right? Tr Cream has TP. Okay, this can be a bit iffy, but Hexac Gates can mean that we can be fast on the map again. And... Aye, aye, aye. So this is super scary, right? If we go here and rush in, we are all dead. We are all dead, right? So, like, look how T1 plays this. They play with their ranges so beautifully. And, like, once they commit the cooldowns from TES's uh, team fighters, right? From 369, from Jackie Love, then we commit and then we go through different angles. Anyway, now let's see. It's just the same dance again, right? Nothing matters that happened. Oh my god, a three man Bard ultimate. Can we see something crazy once more? Oh my god, the Baron also stolen by owner! Fucking let's go! Cream over the wall, that's a bit scary. Boom, pop, Guma puts him in the sniper. Pang! No! <laughs> he gets that motherfucker too! Let's go! Whoo! T1, man, it's like... <sighs> Can we finish? Yeah, we should be able to finish, man. Open base, Baron buff, everyone dead. Guma, massive schlong. Destroying these turrets here. Actually, we're not looking for finish. <laughs> Why aren't we going for finish? Hey! I mean, owner picks up soul. It's okay. I mean, this is this is as close as to finishing what like ever. This is correct. I, I, honestly, this is correct. No. Is it also okay flexing mechanics here as well, which is crazy. But okay, so we have two minutes of Baron, we have three inhibitors, we have Soul, they only have one Nexus turret, we can just really walk into their base. And the, look at this, oh, the T1 emblem on top of it. I know, like, the angles are so good and they can't do anything anymore, right? The composition here from TES is something where it's like, if you funnel into them, into corridors, you're all a four. You just, no, you're gone. But the problem is if you flank this, and that's what we can do, especially, like, that's the strength of this Bard champion. Bard is so good against compositions like that. The compositions that don't have that much engage, but just have a lot of damage and have a lot of AoE. Are immobile and, like, all of this, right? It's just, Bard is in, like... Anyway, we we can ramble on. I mean, that doesn't make it easy to play or anything. T1 here, obviously, now this is just for KDAs, just to look pretty... Oh, okay. That was a bit scary. <laughs> But yeah, T1 win game number one in a beautiful fashion. This game was so, this game was so good. This one was, like this one is has been, I think, the best game at world so far. I think quality wise, because TS played really well. They like they they leveraged their champions correctly. They they did the correct things. I wouldn't be like, yeah, okay, they, what did they do? This is wrong. Sure, you can maybe point to these barons as like bad starts, but they have really good baron damage. They can do the baron very safely. And in contrast to T1, they want 5v5s, they want fights, they want to force fights. Sure, the problem is, if you start the objective, you're the you're at least somewhat in a vulnerable position, right? That is just a given in any case. But they need to do something like that to force the fights, otherwise the Camille is just going to run through side lane. So I believe personally, even though it obviously it looks a bit silly, I think they have to do like these Baron starts, right? Otherwise, they have no like no options, right? Because at some point, this Camille is just going to end the games through side. Even though Rumble, as I mentioned again and again, can ult the waves, can clear the waves, at some point, it's just not going to be enough. And yeah, T1, I mean, they played the fight so beautifully. They played this so well. I mean, and, and even prior, right? How o especially Ona and Kara like maneuvered over the uh, over the map to set up for these objectives the neutral the early neutrals right picking up these early dragons and all of that that was so well done and it's not like blg just inted and like i don't know dude crux or something uh, with five people or something like that right sure this one top lane play where they went with five people that was a pretty ballsy move i don't i think that was a big mistake right because it got 
uh, it got like solo XP for people and all of that. But uh, that's I think the, the only big blunder. T1 just did so well. I'm I'm uh, that was a great game. Please more of that. Maybe with less heart attacks for me. But anyway, anyway, more games, more games. Okay, we're in the next draft. I I mean I I I I'm so starstruck. Not only obviously T1 win beautiful but i mean this one was one of the best games and worlds we have seen this year i i mean maybe in, even in a long time this one was so well done by like by both teams right both teams like you can't even say anyone inted or trolled or like did anything fucking stupid or anything like that like it was just so well played by both of them right and t1 then with such beautiful team fighting really executing their champions so well like really getting everything out of them and like out outplaying like what TES had to do and sure you can now say it's like oh yeah T1's champions if you play them super super well they counter TES champions and yeah maybe but it's like huh like how are you going into a draft and be like oh yeah sure you can uh, I don't know Heimerdinger counters Zeraf because dude you just dodge I don't know his abilities and then he does zero damage like the argument that oh yeah if you play your champions super perfectly and uh, like outplay everything then obviously the counter is like what? Uh, it's just that T1's champions had the ability to outplay and uh, they executed on that and that's not a reliable thing that's not a thing that you should ever like expect and that's why I was a bit uh, maybe a bit uh, scared coming into like the late game team fights right especially like in a world where the Caitlyn can't go 10-0. Anyway, enough of that yapping, right? We're in the draft, we have a Silas first pick, we have T1 on red side again, obviously, right? The things didn't change, the bands are more or less the same. They swapped the Vive for the Sejuani, so again, respect to owner, man, that guy, he's our hero. Uh, yeah, Silas now being picked up for Cream. He says, okay, Faker's too strong on that. Let's see what T1 has the, like, what is their answer? First answer is we're picking Rumble, so <laughs> the Silas can steal Rumble Gold. That's scary. Then, yeah, the Ezreal against uh, against the uh, Zaya Rakan incoming, right, with the Rakan picked on uh, R2, fine. And obviously, I think Ezreal against Rumble is pretty good, right? You can just reliably get away from him if he's chasing you, and you get away from his, uh, what is this, uh, his ultimate, right? You, you can't pick an immobile uh, AD carry against Rumble. That's just, like, insane, especially if it's already paired up with a Rakan. Not the biggest Rakan fan right now. We saw some decent Rakans yesterday, if I remember, in terms of mechanics, but I think the champion does not offer the same things, especially like when you f look at the like early lane swaps and stuff like that, and the situations that can occur there. Um, I, I don't like it too much. Sure, red side is a bit different in that aspect to blue side, but not by a lot, so that it really matters, I think. Anyway, Rel is being picked up. Rel against Rakan sounds pretty decent, right? Uh, you destroy his shield, make him squish! Oh, Sinchao! Okay, Sinchao locked in. That's another good ult for Cream to steal. I mean, okay, we'll see, we'll see. They they last pick for Faker. That's not something that has happened in, like, I don't know, a couple of decades. But we'll see, we'll see. Okay, okay. Let's see. So, top lane should be... Like, Galio pick here is fine. Really works well, right? You steal the ult from anyone and then... I don't know, yeah, here, like the combination. I mean, it's a bit of anti synergy, right? You steal the uh, Sinjo ult and then you ult everyone away from the Rumble ult. Maybe that's a bit scary, but we'll see. And Tien here, I mean, yeah, going for something like this is okay, right? He's scrapping really well against uh, like these, yeah, skirmishy scale. Th uh, thank you, commentator, right? Oh my god. I mean, it's Kerry, it's Kerry is doing this. Rice! Oh my god, do it! Do it! Dude, Rice is actually... Oh, no, 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 not the 0% win rate, Ari, no! Rice would have been so good! Rice would have been so good, it's not an ult to steal. And Ari is just, I mean, sure, Ari works well with the Sinjao, maybe a bit better than Rice, maybe, yeah, I, yeah, probably. But I, I, I... Uh, both of these champions suck against Galio to some extent, but I think Rice is still doing better because he can uh, like go anti-tank better and it's like obviously it's like he's not reliant on like burst combos, right? Because he's a DPS mage, but it's like Rice against Viego is also like I think that like both of these are okay against Viego to some extent. Obviously, it's not amazing, but it's okay. And Rice versus uh, Silas is just 10 million times better than uh, against Ari. 
Maybe the early laning phase might be a bit... I don't know. But, but even then, it should be okay. I don't get it. I don't get it. I mean, I don't know. Again, sure, like with the RA, right, this is more of a, a Faker a pick for like the current days where Faker is like going in, setting up plays, right? RA is more of a setup champion than Rice. Rice is a just a, like, I don't know, a, a classic carry, right? He walks around and does the damage after his team has maybe done something for him, right? He's not something who initiates something like, like that, like that. With that being the case, obviously, having a bit more range on your mid laner or effective range on your mid laner really helps with this T1 composition because, like, Puma is pretty short range and so on and so on. Now, the problem is, we'll have to see how this one goes, right? Because TES, their champions are pretty ballsy, right? They want to go in, they want to skirmish. Not really good at, like, going back or something. Sure, Ezreal, but, like, that's the classic composition from, I don't know, uh, 2018, 2019. Yeah, more 2018, if I remember correctly. You have four Zack Zack champions and then the AD carry, like, Kaisa or... I mean, Kaiser is a bit of a different breed, but Ezreal or Zaya, who can stand on their own. Zack Zack champions that want to go in, that want to skirmish, not maybe, like, they can 5v5, but they much rather love, like, 3v3s or something like that, or, like, fights where people, like, join the fight, not all at the same time, right? Um, like, these kinds of things, right? Again, skirmishes. That's what TS really loves, and, again, to be the aggressor in these types of uh, conflicts, right? Whereas on the other side, T1, sure, you have Ari, you have Sin Zhao, who... In their preferred mode are champions that are the ones going in, being aggressive, right? But more so Sinjo in this one. Sinjo can also be used defensively to some extent, right? Ulting people away and, yeah, using his Q, uh, like the knockup, maybe a bit more like defensively, right? Again, not the best thing. It's like similar to Jarvan, kind of, right? Where it's like, oh, close. I mean... Flash for flash, I think that's beneficial for T1 here. Zeus, please, please, please calm down, Zeus. Please be careful. You know he's there. You should, like, yeah. Oh, Cream is also coming over. Okay, run, run, Zeus, run. Oh, no. He's flashing away. Okay, so it's just Zeus flash. Could have been worse, could have been worse, right? We'll have to see. Can Faker do something? Wave goes into turret, so he's going to pick up a plate. He probably would have gotten this like on his own, but yeah. No XP or anything lost for Cream. He lost one minion and Faker got a plate. Four Zeus's flash. That's okay. Actually, hey, 369 also flash. So it's a flash for flash on top and Faker gets a free plate. Nice. We'll take that. We'll take that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, carrier here on a flank, but we don't really have too much here going for us. But we'll have to see. That's no flash on owner on and on Jackie, and Jackie is also chunked out, right? So they have to be careful. Oh fuck! Gets the smite steal there. We'll have to see, man. We'll have to see. Faker here finds a charm onto the jungler. That's Viego dead. But they are looking for the one more combo. It's interrupted. Now everyone is grouped up. Does it matter or does it not? So far, it's good for us. <laughs> Faker with the flash forward and picks up another kill, man. He's locked in. He's locked in. That's why he has an Ari skin, motherfuckers. Let's go! 2-0-1, oh, 100% kill participation, 369, what the hell are you doing there? Oh, actually, we have no damage. Man, that guy is a unit already. Jesus Christ. Uh, hey, let's focus on the pro positives right now, man. Did we get the grubs? I mean, 3-2-3 three, three in grubs. We'll take that, we'll take that. Let's watch this fight. Obviously, again, Jackie no flash and already chunked out, same. And Faker here with the pick. Immediate follow-up by everyone. They one-shot that guy before he can get any crazy stuff. And again, 369 without flash, he can't join uh, like the fight over the wall, right? And, I mean, again, Jackie can't be too aggressive. Faker here finds him on the ward there. Mwah, beautiful. Ay, 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 ay. Fuyo, man. T1. Okay, so, the thing is... We're now watching highlights. I recorded for the rest of the series. I'm not spoiling it now. You probably know how this ended, right? My videos are usually out late. Ay, ay, ay. And, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I, I muted the audio. We have no audio for the rest of the video. Anyway, we're watching highlights now. And uh, let's enjoy T1 clips once more. Again, you're probably, ha you, you're probably not watching my video for, like, the first time. or whatever. If you're watching this video, first of all, thank you. Second of all, Hope you enjoyed the series, and now let's enjoy the last highlights together. Obviously, I mean, just look at this fucking insane team fighting here. We see how T1 wants to team fight in this composition, right? They are just much better in the back to back or like front to back, right? TS they want fights that like if it's a 5v5, they don't want the. 
classic 555, they want like a 3v3 here, a 2v2 there. They want to split up the fights, they want to create the mess, right? And T1 has to be careful that they're not j creating such a mess if like Faker and Zeus are flanking, Owner and Carrier are diving forward and everyone is split up, right? That's not the fight they want to have. But sometimes they have to be careful that they are playing their champions and not that the, play the champions are playing them, if that makes sense, right? Well, yeah, overall this game stayed pretty good so far. Obviously, 0-4, you know how this is going to go. And uh, in case you don't, I'm not going to, like, spoil anything, I guess, like that, like that. Let's just enjoy, man. Absolute banger performance by T1 here in this game so far. And, uh, yeah, the gold lead is not too massive, but, like, step by step, right? Turret falls in, uh, I think it was in bot lane to the minions here. T1, like, equalizing that score. Kara here on the side. I mean, that bro has been pretty aggressive with his warding here. Pretty disrespectful, obviously. In this game, currently, he's playing, um... The Rakan, pretty slippery champion, and here T1 has been baiting the Baron, Faker with the charm, Mako. It's not going to be the first and last time that he's going to get picked up in this spot. And obviously here, if you look at the map, right, it's a, the Baron versus Dragon, like standoff, right? Uh, big cooldowns here used pretty aggressively by T1, they have to be careful. Oh, Faker. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be okay. Uh, but yeah, I mean... Nothing really blown, right? Faker chunk, but he has the TP, right? He can go back and uh, yeah, can just rejoin. The thing is, Mako here has the support level nine, right? Sure, he it's the thirtieth minute, but that bro is level nine. Like he's just going to recall. Uh, he's just going to be here at the same time. Kerry has been spotted here at the side. Can he get attacked? We'll have to see. So T1 here. Ooh, Guma no E. Use it on the Baron. Oh, Jackie again. So chunk man owner has been doing so well and. Well, Mako not here, and yeah, creams no stolen old. Oh, yo, Kuma's old so good, man. Goes into the air the moment Mako attacks. Jackie with the earlier, uh, what is it? Chunk can't really enter too aggressively. Faker finds another kill on that 5 0 oh, 4. I mean, uh, at, at, at this part in the original reaction, I like, I couldn't even, I, I was like, what, what am I going to say about, like, here? Zeus, I guess, like, the, the, the smallest one or I don't know because like owner goes in chunks the AD carry carrier with like massive uh, like CC combos there uh, like Faker knocks down the damage Guma like his positioning is just so clutch and the target selection of T1 right no one dies that's one thing <laughs> what do I mean with that one maybe but uh, no one dies right they go off uh, one guy after the other and again sure that champions are favored in these fights but again it's like you don't see mechanical misplays by TS or anything like that and now obviously the gold lead is like massive and they pick them up here one by one. That's like the aggressive part, right? Sure, we see Guma can't really contribute too much here. Faker will get the kill in the end. Oh, 13. Can we get cream here as well? W comes in and misses. Yeah, I don't have future vision. I have watched this before. Ah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, just... <laughs> I'm just... It's like seeing it again. It's like I'm so starstruck. That's like they are so fucking good. And again, this game, it's uh, it's not impossible for TES to play, but I think here, in comparison to game number one, where I think T1 had, like, sure, good champions, but it was very hard to execute here, I think T1, as long as you're calm and calculated, you execute this comp in line 9 out of 10 cases. Maybe not if you're hungry life, then you try to int, but hey. Big win, like, 15-0. and 0. I mean, just absolutely clean performance, man. And uh, now here, this uh, pick here by Carrier, at the end, it's the shen. I mean, here, by the way, watch this int. What is Cream doing? That guy is just, like, he has lost his mind. And TS is a pretty emotional team. Sure, they have, like, some experienced players, but these players have also a history of being very emotional. Regardless, the pike angle is fucking horseshit, right? T1, again, has a similar comp to last game, where it's like, hey, if you run into us, we'll kill you. And this pike is just like, what is this guy doing here, right? He just doesn't bring any value in, in that front. Sure, Carrier might play him pretty good in this game. We'll see. But uh, that's about it. Also, I don't know, man, about this cannon pick. Cannon, in general, I don't think is pretty good right now. I mean, and unless it's ARAM. By the way, watch this int. Well, in a, mo a matter of moments. But yeah, he goes for the on-hit build. Sure, it helps dealing damage. And like DPS is maybe something that TS might have some issues with. And being the, an AP, NAR running, uh, AP cannon running into this T1 comp. By the way, look at that hook. Boom! Nice one. So good. But uh, yeah, I mean, now watch this in, by the way, like what, what are they, what are the bros doing? So first of all, Guma is just chilling here on the right side of the screen. It just doesn't matter if you pay your attention to the left side. And now look at this mega Nar bar completely stacked up. Yeah, sure. Like, t like that's a cannon with Nar, uh, that's a cannon with old, but it's a, 
AD cannon with ult. You're on the turret. I mean, that's just so crazy. By the way, Nargalio. Now I, I can kind of jinx it, but don't really want to. But this like remembers of somewhat of 2017. We're not going f overboard with our uh, 2017 references, but yeah, just nice to see. And yeah, O3. So far, so good. And I mean, hey. The individual performances by the T1 members in this series have, are just so great. I think, like, it's it's so hard to say. I think Zeus has been the, the worst performer today, but, I mean, that's, uh, that, is, that says more about everyone else, literally. And by the way, watch this alley -oop. Oh, it's not short, but flash, boom, pop, pow. Yordle on Yordle action, and uh, it ends with someone hammering someone else. Well, whatever. I mean, it's just 0-4, by the way, at this point in uh, in this thingy majingy, right? They have, like, TS has not gotten a kill for, I don't know, 50 plus minutes, 60 minutes or something in this series. Absolutely pff, so clean. But the problem is in this game after, I don't know, like, this goes well, last game goes well. We see this here, right? Which is, this is not legal, right? This is happy gaming. A Galio and a Poppy trying to, like, steal a... <laughs> A, uh, what is it a red buff look at the waves right look at the map no one is there to uh, to help them so yeah that was just a bit too uh, too much and watch what Zeus does here in the matter of moments I mean I don't know I don't know a bit iffy again so it's, it's not game losing but these things were a bit unnecessary like unnecessary as one thing and maybe a bit greedy as the, is the other but uh, yeah that's kind of kind of about it here, and uh, yeah. What do we watch? Also, oh, yeah, here we see Lol Park, right? Uh, having fun, and uh, sure, with the Rift Herald we lose the top lane turret, right? That's something that would have happened regardless, because the bot lane turret was already taken care of. Our mid lane turret is super full HP. That thing is super like cool in this game. You just have it for free, and yeah, here Carrot he goes for the deepest of wards and. Again, it's just unnecessary. Sure, the ward is cool to have, but it's not something that wins you the game in most cases. So, with that being said, right, this equalizes the game somewhat, right? 4,000 gold leads, some of that is on the pike. But yeah, we just one shot the Nar. Uh, not the Nar, but uh, the, the cannon, right? That guy can't just do anything. Like, he's just he's just so cooked. Sure, it's a kill for. and they get the dragon, so it's not terrible. By the way, here, just a flashback, Mako again. Poor dude, and uh, yeah, it's an execute by by carrier, so that's that. But we lose our jungler, so that's a bit scary. But well, Guma pulls back the feathers, and that's that. Here, Jackie has to flash already. Oh, didn't use cleanse in this fight. I thought he cleansed as well. But uh, yeah, first of all, like a bit hard to see carrier lands a very cool hook there to uh, get Jackie into position for Guma's E to. Like, not only kill, like, do the damage, but also root him and so on and so on. So, yeah, very nicely done by Carrier again. Owner, sadly, I mean, yeah, died, but it is what it is. Here again, we're doing the Baron, we have so much damage, and we have a Poppy, so, yeah. Owner just sends two packing, and it's the classic, the support that dies. And here the thing is, no one on TES has Flash, but Mako, so a bit sad that Owner picked him as a target. It's understandable, probably you probably didn't have that on the radar, but, uh, yeah. The only target with Flash has been selected, and this year it's a bit messy, but we disengage, right? Our champions need to be respectful, we are very ult-reliant. This is something, again, um, that's pretty interesting, obviously looks a bit silly, but Carrier and Faker will, throughout this game, pair up in the side lanes. Not only because, I don't know, they're cool on all, but, uh, yeah, Ripperino, oh, like here, oh, yeah, I remember, Owner and, uh, who else was it? Was it Carrier? No, Guma. They were, like, I don't know, doing some silly stuff in Topside River, losing cooldowns, but didn't really matter too much. Just a kill given over. It takes away from our Baron power play, but that's kind of about it for the negatives. Here we, again, look, this is so risky, right? Stepping up like that. But the thing is, Guma has ult, has cleanse, and we have secured this pathway here as an escape tool, so that's that. It worked out, getting this mid lane in a turret. Here we have a, a, a turret trade situation, and this is what I said just a couple seconds earlier. Faker and Carrier teaming up in the side lane, and this is good not only because, I don't know, they're strong, they're like tanky or mobile, whatever, they can get away, but also because Faker as a like, semi-tank just doesn't need that much gold, whereas Carrier getting some gold is just, it's just nice, it's just good to have. Here, very clean, Faker is going to be the bouncer, and yeah, overall, a bit of a messy situation. Cream here gets over the wall, and yeah, with... Uh, T1, like, kind of, I don't know, diverting their attention 
Faker doesn't receive the uh, like a good enough follow up, but it doesn't really matter. Now, obviously, after this, we lose the mid lane turret and it's like back tempo. Same with the dragon. It's a bit annoying, but again, it just it's a positive thing because I feel like it highlights that TS is just actually a good team and they're not just inting or something. I say that, but here, yeah, this is that. And uh, the context for that is obviously we had the Baron. We saw how hard it was to siege up. We're already at the 36 minute here at this point. So the thing is, like, T1 can't siege up the base, right? Even though they don't have the best wave clear, it's just not what our champions are really good at. So, yeah, really just baited them in for nothing because there's no Baron on the map. It's just, it just didn't make sense why TS would follow us there into the dark. And uh, yeah, in the end, I mean, I, I, I don't know what to say. Just amazing. I hope this isn't like T1 peaking in quarters already. And then, I don't know, it's like I've used up all of their juice or whatever. I don't know. But yeah, TS played well. They had some silly things, I think, especially in the early game of this game. Um... But overall, I let's pause here. Oh, actually, we have interviews. Let's mute. Um, so thank you for highlight video guy. But yeah, overall, I think TS played really well. I think they played better than uh, like three out of the four other teams that we have seen in quarters so far. Maybe that's me coping, but I think they just really... It, it wasn't seen in these highlights, right? Because it's not the action, but they really were challenging T1 on like these map plays and with the positioning, right? It's not the kills, it's not the action. It's like this positioning. It's like, oh, can you do this? Do I allow you to do that, right? It's like these micro aggressions or like something, not the SJW, whatever the kind, like the contests, right? And uh, yeah, I think they did that really well. Like they got some turrets and especially like in the later parts or like in the late, in this third game where uh, like T1 obviously gave them uh, a few moments here and there, but uh, yeah, they used these moments, right? To get turrets, to get objectives. And uh, yeah, they have been a really good opponent. Uh, Good thing we got our revenge for the uh, best of one earlier, and that's that. And on our side, Faker had a phenomenal series. I uh, would have picked him for player of the series, but now watching these highlights again and thinking about it, I mean, Guma going deathless, Carrier did. I think Carrier only died once in this entire series, uh, and Owner. I mean, with all these superstars, it's a bit hard to <laughs> to look good as a like a setup jungler. But, uh, I mean, Owner had a phenomenal game, especially, like, I think the game number one was so good from him. And then later, he became a bit more of a backseater with everyone else making plays. And again, as I said earlier, I think Zeus was maybe the worst, but uh, that speaks more to, like, Faker and the bot lane absolutely, like, overperforming so highly. I, 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 just, I just was completely starstruck throughout all of this. And while well, this might be a bit of a, a bummer of a reaction because it's just, it doesn't encapsulate the emotions, the screams. I guess we got that for game number one. But hey, I hope you enjoyed and I hope we see each other with more T1 content in the future. I'm not going to mute my mic next time and then we're going to have some fucking banger reactions, I hope. Anyway, take care and we see each other soon. Bye bye, my friends.